Hi guys and welcome back to Catherine's What's Up or whatever we want to call this. I'll come up with, with a name sooner or later. Uh, perhaps Ka Catherine's Random Chats. But today I wanted to give you the backstory to the Bible that I'm using for the daily Bible promise thing that I'm doing. Uh, I've been reading from daily Bible cards that I was given in a box, but they're in the NIV version. But I've been using the New American Standard Bible to explain more what that verse might have meant. Why the NASB? Is it because I think it's the only Bible in the world? No, to really be honest, I prefer the ESV, the English Standard Version. However, it's the only physical large print Bible that I own. And if I were to read off of a computer, uh, the computer would interfere with my microphone and would make it really hard for you to hear. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm using this. But the second is, is that this is my grandmother's Bible. My grandmother used it uh, for a few years before she passed away. It was probably her only Bible, to be honest. You see, my grandmother was raised Catholic, and uh, she was raised in the Catholic Church, and when she was a teenager, around 16, she married against her family's wishes, but she got married within the Catholic Church still because back then the age of consent and the age you could be married was 16 without your parents' consent. So she got married. Well, she married a scallywag. He was a booze runner during the prohibition across the Montana, southern Alberta border. But beyond that, there were rumors that he was a white slave trader, which is the old equivalent of human trafficking. Uh, the, those rumors were never absolutely proven, but they were enough of the truth that my grandmother had no choice to protect their two small girls. She divorced him, but my grandmother married my grandfather, uh, and my grandfather was an agnostic. So my grandmother and my grandfather were married about 35 years to 40 years before he died uh, from a heart condition he was a lot older than my grandmother. So my grandmother spent most of her life, I would say, the large percentage of her life outside of any church environment. In about 1973, my older brother had a dramatic conversion to Christ. And he became so plugged into the Lord and really sought him. And uh, Jim's life transformed. He still struggled with um, depression now and again, but there was a foundation underneath all of the troubles that were going on in his life that my grandmother noticed. So one day, about 1978, around that point, I think, my grandmother was visiting my parents and she was sitting on the back porch and my brother was mowing the lawn. While he was mowing the lawn, he set aside a couple of books that he had been reading and left them on the porch. My grandmother picked up one of them and it was by Corey Ten Boom called The Hiding Place. When she, he, she kind of flipped through the pages while Jim was doing his thing and when he finished, she began to ask him about the book. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in because Jim was still really young in his faith and he kind of had a witness style that was reminiscent of using a sledgehammer to push a pin into a cork board. He wasn't exactly subtle. For some reason though, Holy Spirit, Jim softened his stance and he talked to my grandmother and answered all of her questions. He was really honest with her and shared some of the struggles he had been facing for most of his life and how God was giving him help now. My grandmother tucked that conversation away and Jim never knew the profound impact that that conversation had with her. Jim died a few years later in a car accident. Shortly after Jim's death, I wrote my grandmother. I was in youth with the mission at the time. I was in the habit of writing to her about once a month. And so in one of the, my letters, I mentioned that I was really enjoying my time in Youth with a Mission. For some reason, that time, Youth with a Mission triggered in her mind, and she immediately wrote me back. And she was so excited. She said, there were people 
in her church, immediately I stopped at that point at the letter and went, what? Church? My grandmother's going to church? And then she goes on to say that they were in youth with a mission. And I'm going, what? And then she explained that these dear, sweet, young married couple were renting a mobile home next to hers and that they were inviting her over for supper. They were coming over to her place for supper. They had tea together. My grandmother shared some of her garden with them. My grandmother was famous for her gardening skills. Um, so she was explaining all of this and then she said, I don't think I ever told you. And then she told me the story of Jim and the porch and the hiding place and how all three planted questions in her heart and a longing to know God. So she started to go to this little United Church that wasn't far away. Well, this little church happened to be pastored by a born-again, spirit-filled man. And uh, he preached the gospel, but they didn't do it in a bash you over the head sort of way. The youth with a mission a couple just loved my grandmother into the kingdom. So when my grandmother was telling me all of these things, I was jumping up for joy. I was so excited and so relieved to know that she had come to know the Lord. After that point, my grandmother and I shared together letters back and forth. She would share with me Bible verses that she was learning and the things she was learning from them. and. Uh, my heart leapt. I cannot explain it anything more than that. To see this woman grow in her faith. So my grandmother's later years were not really good ones health-wise. She experienced increasing dementia to the point that she had to move from a small seniors condo into a nursing home. And at that point, all the few remaining things that she owned, my parents stored in our basement because they had a large house. Well, her Bible was in there. And when my mother moved from that big house into a senior's condo, we as her children were invited to go throughout the house and take whatever we wanted outside of a few pieces of furniture and paintings that my mom was gonna take with her. I saw the Bible and I jumped on it. I didn't uh, even know that my parents had it. This Bible is a testimony and a reminder to me and a promise of hope that even those who have wandered a long time from God, those who have turned their back completely on God, there's hope for them. If we pray for them, if we love them, if we respect them, if we don't preach at them, if we show them the love of God in action, and if we trust God, that God has them in his hands and he will bring them into the kingdom, then God can move on behalf of our prayers. So don't give up on those you know who haven't yet come to the Lord.